Hi guys, Katana here, back with the live Q&A, Tall Tales with Mike Chapman and Andrew Preston, so let's waste no time and get straight to it. Hope you enjoy. Armando Mayorga 2 says, Could we eventually spread the love of the Skeleton Lord to forts and Order of Souls voyages? I'm sure it will make things more interesting for the captains. Their reply was, This sounds like a fantastic idea. Shocked winky face. Winky face. One Gloombeard says, Yars and salutations. Throughout the Shores of Gold chain of tall tales, we come across a myriad of ancient relics and tools, spyglasses, telescopes, which can gaze upon the stars, compasses which point towards designated wayward souls, and many more trinkets and tools with unique properties and purpose. What inspired you when creating these, visually and narratively? What actually is it that the Order of the Souls does with captured skeletons and the skulls of captains and other noteworthy undead? We know that they gather knowledge through magical interactions with them, but what exactly is the fate of the undead? Are they obliterated once and for all when a mystic has siphoned the soul of or essence into themselves? We've seen skulls crumble to dust, but we've also seen others endure and be merely tossed aside after the ritual. Do the undead come back and re-manifest themselves again, somehow, or are they then gone forevermore? P.S. I am glad that the Gold Hoarder was confirmed to not be fully vanquished. I enjoyed following the trail to Tribute Peak and come face to face with Wrathbone. But I always imagined him as a schemer, sort of villain for us. One who sends his lackeys out to do his bidding, Stitch a Jim and the Forsaken Shores story, for instance. And overall, has some form of influence within his enshrouded world. And I hope we will interact with his lackeys, Jim, and even the Gold Hoarder himself yet again, while finding out more about these box of wondrous secrets. What are they? what they contain and why he and others would desire them. Looking forward to what you will do to do with Flameheart and more importantly, the Captain. Gloombeard, Captain of the Wailing Banshee, Mystic and Skeleton in Disguise. Their retort on this one was, so there are a bunch of themes that we wanted to get across as part of the Shores of Gold story. Most notably information around the ancient civilization that existed before pirates reached the Sea of Thieves. Spyglasses, puzzle vaults, etc. The nature of the Order of Souls and how they read the minds of the skulls of dead pirates. This lore was always a planned part of the design of the characters and Order of the Souls quests even before launch, but Shores of Gold allowed us to explain this as part of your interactions with Madame Olivia and Madame Olive. In terms of the difference between pirates and skeletons, pirates who are living will be returned to life by the ferryman, whereas pirates who have become cursed do not. The soul of each skeleton is trapped inside the skull, making it a valuable object to the Order of Souls, given their ability to extract this soul and its memories, therefore giving them power in the Sea of Thieves as the Order would know the location of the lost hordes of these skeletons. The secrets of the Box of Secrets will be revealed. <laughs> oh my god! Now that is exciting shit. Secretary said, Ahoy! Any chance of Captain Briggsy and or the trap maker reappearing in the future? Would love to see more of Briggsy. Might she be coming back uncursed now? They replied, Would love to see some of the characters in Shores of Gold come back in the future. Just Sayen at 93 said, Hey there, dev team. So, in the eighth tall tale, Revenge of the Morning Star, we are given access to the skeleton language. With that knowledge, some of us have been able to decode the symbols on the box of wondrous secrets. The three symbols on the front being flame, two, heart. Could you give some clarification on the order this is supposed to be read as some of us in the community have been thinking that the symbol for the word two would come first, making the phrase on the front of the box 
to Flameheart. They replied, they are related to Flameheart, although the contents will remain a mystery for now. <gasps> it's all coming together. Ioni Falcon says, the Shores of Gold is amazing. One of my top gaming moments is now an experience from this tale. Thank you for all the hard work. Did you anticipate Briggsy being such a fan favorite? They said, thank you, Amir. Personally, didn't expect Briggsy to be a fan favorite as I was setting up how difficult she was for a four player crew. Haha, <laughs> wink. But did think Rose and George would become a fan favorite. I love all the artwork the community make of Briggsy and the other characters. It's incredible to see. That was Kia's reply. Mike the Mutinous's reply is, she is hands down my favourite, hence the focus of the story being on exploring important characters in Briggsy's memories. I love the fact that Briggsy has gone down well with everyone. Capt Mudbeard said, I've completed each tale more than five times each and have unlocked all the cosmetics, but I only have 83 out of 85 commendations. I know this is a known issue, but can you address if there are any workarounds for this or will we suddenly log in and see that we now have all 85 commendations? Thanks. Loved every minute of the tall tales. Can't wait for more. They said, yes, I believe it will just correctly refresh when the issue is fixed. Apologies about this. I know it would drive me crazy. Johnson Carl said, the Uncharted Isle at I-13 sure is an interesting place. The reply is, I wonder. White Knight 1999 said, hello, hello. I don't know if you, you'll be allowed to answer this one, but are we ever going to see another purpose for the Shores of Gold Island? Its size alone makes it one of my favourite islands in the game, let alone the mountains full of lore. But I could see so much more happening at this huge landmass in the future updates. Love the game and love you devs. They answered, love Tribute Peak. It's now one of my favourite islands. I can see a world where we build new things that take place on this fantastic island in the future. Then Frenzy Pegasus 64 says, I have seen many complain that the Skeleton Lord fights are all too similar and feel really lacking as if so much more could be done to make them more exciting. Any chance we will see an improvement now or in the future tour tales? Their retort was, there is always room for improvement in game development. Personally, I am really happy with how the Lords turned out. There have been lots of discussion about how we can expand new AI threats in the future. Winky face, winky face! Lyra Kalanchi's backy says, Mike, you suggested the possibility of dropping a tease or two in this Q&A session, so I'd like the chance to ask you if you could tell us about any juicy tidbits you can recall that were cut from Tall Tales set list, or if you'd like, maybe some things we can expect in the next batch of Tall Tales. He said, there was an idea that involved tracking down a rum runner. The quest book was clearly written by someone who'd drank a few. Mechanically, it involved looking at a drunken version of the constellations. Players would have to get drunk themselves and look through the spyglass to see ships, tankards and treasure chests in the stars. Ultimately, it felt too similar to Stars of a Th Thief, but the story aspect was fun. Secretary came back saying, Ahoy, another question. Are we going to see more cosmetics from the Tall Tales being made available, such as Briggsy's entire outfit, or just the coat, or the lantern from the Ferryman? Also, are we ever going to see a figurine of Briggsy, like we got with Flameheart and the Gold Hoarder? Because I need one. And they replied, we'd love to build out more of these cosmetics in the future. We planned and built the rewards for Shores of Gold, but that doesn't mean new cosmetics won't arrive in the future. Saint Palugu said, can we get a grave on Lone Cove dedicated to Rose and George? Pretty please? Kia said, so sad. 
just saying, 93 says, Ahoy dev team! So I know that the Shores of Gold draws a lot from the Athena's Fortune novel. I had read the novel before the release of the Tall Tales, so when I was extra excited to see all of my favourite characters from the novel come into the game. That being said, are there any plans for or a sequel to Athena's Fortune, or can we expect another novel soon? The reply was, yes, we're discussing where we could take a story, but nothing to outright confirm right now. So EggGamer13 has put a couple of links in with their question. Um, I will put links in for the forum here as well, underneath. So they said, when Anniversary launched, me and another community member discovered Lords of the Sea and decoded the message of the book's front page. I'm sure this tall tale is related to Flameheart. Then they've put Link. Also, you did some references to fire-cursed cannonballs as seen here. Then they've put another link. So, any teasers about this? Am I correct with something, or all of it? They replied, Lords of the Sea was the tenth tale that was just too much to achieve in the time, and was also the tale that tied the least into the direct Shores of Gold quest line. The cool story aspects of this will still see the light of day in future tales. Yelmerk has put, I'm always in favour of using current in-game items in new ways, like how you added digging up bait. Any plans for expanding the roles of items introduced in Tall Tales, like the constellations, traps, puzzle rooms, beyond their original intent? Also, I want to suggest using the compass to find random buried items. Make it spin, like in a storm if you're standing over a hidden object. Kia replied with, I also love this and would love to build new gameplay opportunities out of the mechanics we've built for Shores of Gold. Can see us investigating this in the future. Olitov says, Hello! With future tall tales, could we be expecting moving objects, like the crane platform on Thieves Haven, to become usable? It would add a lot to adventure and could be fun to incorporate into tall tales, like if we had a large object. Thanks. They replied with, yes, would love to do this. We've talked about it. It's complex, but keen to have pulleys, like the sail controls, as part of future mechanisms. Fox Dodge asks, are there any plans to add more checkpoints in future tales, similar to Tale 9? Kia replies, we've been discussing players' progress through tales a lot recently in the studio, and we hear the feedback loud and clear that some of the tall tales are quite long. This, however, is a tricky problem to solve in a shared world. Who owns the progress through the tale and how do we resume a tale in an approachable way? I see this being something we continue to think about for the future. Olitov wants to know, whatever happened to Yura from North Star Sea Post after Sudge replaced her? Did she retire? The reply was, she was eaten by a shark! Oh. A gamer queries, another question, are we going to see more about Wanda and is her hideout in Wanda's Refuge going to be used for something else in the future? Mike the Mutinous replies, she's dead, you killed her, how can she come back? Winky face. Okay, Vernios asks if there is one thing you can improve on from the Shores of Gold Tall Tales, what would it be and why? Kiara answers, there is always ways to improve. The main three areas we could have improved would be Tail Lump, giving the players the ability checkpoints through tails. Tail Balance, ensuring the puzzles and encounters had been balanced better and tail discoverability, making it easier for more players to find and discover tall tales. Team Zupski says, Ahoy Mike and Andy, thanks for taking time out of your day to talk to us. A couple of questions regarding Revenge of the Morningstar and the future of Sea of Thieves. 
It was hinted by Eve's dropping skelly conversations that the chalice of resurrection is the same chalice that Captain Flameheart found in the law book. Now, after we defeated Grey Marrow, we just sort of left the chalice and Captain Douglas skull as we ran off with a piece of the shroud breaker. Will leaving those items behind come back into play in the future? And also, Will we learn more about Captain Douglas and his glorious skull, and why Grey Marrow wanted to resurrect him? And finally, Grey Marrow never dropped his skull. He could still be out there, right? The answer to that was... So Captain Douglas is a character in the Athena's Fortune novel that, while still human, was affected by an encrusting curse. Many decades later, you obviously see him with the crystal growths on his skull. The Chalice of Resurrection belongs to Grey Marrow, and he uses it to draw his forces to himself by resurrecting the dormant ones that have previously died, by can be brought back. But can be brought back? Both Douglas and the Chalice could be seen again. At the very least, you'll learn more about Grey Morrow in the future. Micro666 said, Will emergent skelly sloops be a thing in the world and not just limited to the battle clouds? They answered, We have emergent skeleton ships in the world now for you to seek out and hunt. Micro666 come back comes back with another one and says, I loved the ferryman's lantern in Tale 8. Would love to see this used in the future for discovering hidden items out in the world. Secret stashes or something even better? The answer was simple. It was purely winky face. <laughs> Ardent Hollern says, Is there any chance that a joinable skeleton faction will emerge one day? Kia answers with a cheeky winky face and then a shocked face. Hmm. Another one from Micro666. Mike, you made a reference to a Masters of the Universe slash portal link for the future Sea of Thieves content. Can you tell us more? Give a tease. Thanks. So Mike the Mutinous says, So, it's not the portal bit that everyone thinks. There is an interesting, visually impressive moment when you first see He-Man that would be pretty amazing to see in Sea of Thieves. Fastbike94 asks, will we be getting banjos and more shanties at some point? Kiara answers with a specialty, a cheeky winky face and then a shocked face. Sir Swagpants says, where is Flameheart? And Mike says, he's resting! Lethality1 asks, can anything be done to mitigate the problem of players losing hours of progress on a tall tale due to other players or any reason? The retort was, yes, we've discussed some options here about giving players limited abilities to safeguard their items, as well as how we could implement a checkpoint system. Obviously, longer tales allow us to take the story to more interesting places, but we know this is a barrier for players to enjoy the tales. Lyric Lanchi queries, Mike, you said the possibility of dropping a tease or two in this Q&A session, so I'd like the chance to ask if you could tell us about any juicy tidbits you can recall that were cut from the tall tale set list, or if you'd like, maybe some things we can expect in the next batch of tall tales. Mike answers, so we've obviously been planning out future tales and I'm so excited by the possibilities. I really enjoyed planning out and designing the fate of the Morning Star tale as part of Shores of Gold. So a ghost story feels like a nice place to start, although keen for the tale to also surprise you. 
That zone's super fun. Johnson Carl has a curious one. He says, strangely, there's unused puzzle vaults that fetches rest and ash and reaches. Good eye. So, Mike says, while we did the work for Shores of Gold, we thought it was also nice to plan ahead. That's a good sign. A Captain Broly says, any plans to release the merfolk in Tall Tales? I would really love that. That's, I really would like to know the answer behind all of them. Okay, so the answer is, looking forward to diving into the lore of the merfolk. And the origin slash purpose of the mermaid statues. It's part of a future story that's had a lot of thought, but not the focus on the tales we're planning right now. There is a grand story that links future tales together over many characters and events. Merfolk are part of this. Exciting stuff. Armando Mayorga 2 asks... Could we expect some Skeleton Lord themed cosmetics in future Tall Tales? This could be even a small thing after PL10. Really love Briggsy's mask and Grey Marrows. Masks would be interesting if done right. Mike answers, yes, and I agree. Okay, these are some interesting questions asked by Captain Logan. He says, since you answered the softball questions, smiley face, just wondering when we'll get to dive into Bella Nura's story and how long will it be before we understand more about their connection to the Sea of the Damned as well as their connection to the Ferryman? Where is Stitcher Jim and has he decided to side with Captain Flameheart Jr. after finding out what's in the, wondrous, the box of wondrous secrets and realising that Captain Flameheart Jr. is a better boss to follow than the Rathbone. Is the box of wondrous secrets being sent to Captain Flameheart and who is his keeper? Will we ever find out more about his father who adopted him? How far out from now before we get a new area in the Sea of Thieves? The area to the south has been in the shroud for some time and we still don't have a solid idea of where the wreck of the silver blade is. Will that area be tied to merfolk in a future content patch and if so, what are the real purposes for the merpeople statues that Duke has us destroying for the gems? Hopefully these are a little harder to answer. Cheers. The reply was would like to explore more of Bella and Nura's story as well as the Sea of the Damned all up. There's a flow of a wider story we want to tell with tiny hints in the monthly activities right now. Obviously future tall tales will flesh this out further. Regarding Stitcher Jim, I hear a bunch of ragtag pirates defeated the Gold Hoarder. Clearly, nothing comes of greed. But beyond this, what could truly change Stitcher's heart? All I say is that his allegiance has changed. The box of secrets are related to Flameheart and you will find out what's inside. The origin of Flameheart and Father will also be explained. Wow, they're going all out. This is amazing. New areas would be awesome and would like to do more than just expanding out again. Wink. Nothing to confirm though. It takes a lot of time and would like to do more with the gameplay rather than just change the look of islands. Merfolk will be explored and the mermaid statues explained. So much more than meets the eye. Just to set expectations though, this is for the future, not this year. Brilliant. Robden BC, I hope that's right, says Hello, Andrew and Mike. Thanks for doing this Q&A today. I remember talk of an island that would only be accessible via a rowboat through a tunnel, something like a journey to the centre of the earth, and expected it to be in Shroud Breaker, but this is not the case. Is this still a concept for a possible future take? A subterranean island, maybe? Or am I just 
out to lunch on what I thought I heard. There is some spec so much speculation in the community of Twitter it's hard to know what's in game, what's not, and what's rare, confirmed and what's not. Keep up the great work. By the way, the most recent update seems a bit laggy. I'm on a lower spec rig and wondering if I am now borderline required spec. Does this does this change as you add more? Do you need to revise the PC machine specs for the game? Mike answers, use of a rowboat to row into a location is definitely the basis of a future feature. It's better than a norm better than just a normal island and it's not a monster. Scalia says, Ahoy! Thank you so much for doing this Q&A on Tall Tales. This was my favourite part of the anniversary update. Loving all the lore they bought and all the new mechanics they introduced to the game. Tortales introduced in-game a few characters from the extended universe like Briggsy or Captain Slate, but also Tribute Peak. Was the way to introduce these characters planned when the book was written, or did it come out after that? I hope Lorena is doing well and can't wait to see Mercia introduced into the game. What is the mechanism introduced by the tales that you prefer the most? I was also wondering if you had any inspiration about the tales stories. Wild Rose is probably my favourite, so emotional and the music is exceptional. Are there any that are based on real stories? Tall tales have introduced many new me mechanisms and tools into the game. Could these be reused to improve the regular voyages of trading companies? I love the Enchanted Compass. Shores of Gold suggests that there is more than one island. Does that mean Tribute Peak is not the only island in this mysterious region? I have so many questions. They replied to that with, All the tall tales began as stories that focused on specific emotions, such as the tale of love, Wild Rose, Tale of Wonder, Legendary Storyteller, Tale of Revenge, Revenge of the Morning Star, etc. We started with the most ambitious idea we could, which was telling a love story in a pirate game, and that is where the story of Wild Rose began before the widest Shores of Gold story was created around it. So many of the mechanisms are ideas we wanted to do for a while Enchanted Compass, Spyglass, Lantern, etc. I'm particularly fond of the Enchanted Spyglass as the idea of using the stars to navigate was such a romantic notion, especially with players beginning to able to look up and know what a collection of stars meant even without using the Spyglass. This is why we used the constellations to the north, south, east and west for the medallions on the shores of gold as it would make sense if you'd made the journey through the nine tales. All of the stories were fictional and chosen to flesh out the world of existing characters. The original brief for the ten tales that became nine were written during one week where I stayed at home and worked at the kitchen table surrounded by post-it notes. Quite an exhausting progress and clearly the real work was just beginning as then we had to go make them and fully flesh them out. Really keen to unlock the quest variety in Tall Tales as part of standard voyages. Saint Belugu has a quick question. He says, Ahoy Mike and Andy. Was there any design inspiration for the Gold Hoarder's appearance and character personality? And then he has put the beautiful masterpiece of a picture of the Gold Hoarder on his throne. The answer to that was, the Gold Hoarder as a character has been around since before even the Gold Hoarder's trading company and was explored in early concept art. Personality wise, when we cast the actor that voiced him, we wanted him to sound very ancient, as if his mind had been corrupted by the ancient gold that surrounds him. I wanted him to subtly cry slash moan under his breath as you approached him on the throne. He hates what he's become but can never let go. We will try get the cry in at some point. Wink. Darren Kerwin asks, Hi Mike and Andrew. 
First of all, I want to say a big thanks to you and the rest of the team for your work on Tall Tales. I never imagined my favourite video game could be enhanced further by the inclusion of story driven content and puzzle solving elements. They are fantastic addition to the game and I am incredibly grateful to have them in Sea of Thieves. I have questions for both of you and I hope you will be able to answer them. I have two questions for Andrew. Firstly, I would like to know what the most challenging part of designing the Tall Tales was for you and how you were able to overcome it and make it work. Secondly, I reached out to you on Twitter recently with the concept of lighting in trap rooms, the idea of torches going out perhaps by pressing the wrong leather or as a part of a trap set by the enemy. The idea of darkness and using teamwork to progress through areas really appeals to me personally. Is this something you have given thought of since? Could we see something like this in the future series of Tall Tales? To Mike, I am curious to know if this first set of Tall Tales have li has lived up to your personal expectations and what it has been like incorporating feedback from players to improve the tall tales. Difficult? Easy? Finally, I respect that it might not be the right time to talk about future content, but if you are able to give a C of T's as to what the future might hold for brand new tall tales content, I would be massively grateful. Thanks again and keep up the fantastic work. Mike answered this by saying, really like the idea of using darkness as part of a trap. One of the ideas for the gold horde of fight early on was that he would turn out the flames in the treasure room and send shadow skeletons after you. The idea of sets of eyes just coming towards you in the darkness would be so creepy. Also, the room with all the masts and spikes as part of belly of gold was known as the dark room during development where the idea was that players would have to navigate precarious platforms while using their lantern. That sounds awesome. I'll answer the question around what was hard from my perspective. The hardest thing with telling a story is that the over overall flow and sequence of events is locked in. You have a little wiggle room to adjust events or change the scope of mechanics. If they're proven to be extremely complex, even more pressing in a multiplayer world, shared world, as the story just won't make sense. As designers, we'll naturally feel the pressure of implementing the original vision for what we designed and had in our head. This pressure is magnified when it comes to telling a specific story as you need certain events to play out in a certain way to land with players with the impact you had in mind. The actual Shores of Gold quest, Tale 9, was the culmination of all of this. The island was huge, it was hard to fit into memory at the time, but it was the very basis for the whole story and the cul culmination of the epic journey we wanted players to go on. I vividly remember playing all nine tales back to back in one sitting at a rare few weeks ago before the anniversary update went live. The feeling of relief when I got to the Pirate Lord's speech at the end was so immense. Genuinely, I teared up as I left the island. I'll never forget that moment as I was driving back down the drive at Rare to head home. I could have sworn I heard the Shores of Gold version of Becalmed ringing in my ears. All that said, gauging the right difficulty and playtime for each tale is very hard. We really wanted to push and deliver more than anyone was expecting, so might have got a little carried away in parts. We also didn't add the level of polish we wanted for some of the key moments so you'll see some of this get added with future updates. The Pirate Lord speech moment in particular has received some extra love and I'm so proud of how improved that pivotal scene is. Just saying, 93 asks 
What happened to the other mysterious stranger, Gloria? Mike replies, When the pirate lord heard about Briggsy reaching the shores of gold, he asked George, mysterious stranger, with recruiting some would-be future legends into stepping into one of his unfinished adventures. Gloria has her own lead she's investigating. She'll be back. So Mike himself also um, replied to Chronodusk's question when he says, Been playing Sea of Thieves on a regular basis since two months after its launch. It's a, such a special experience for me. I just wanted to say that Tall Tales were very special to me and my crew. I've wanted to see Gold Horde himself rendered in game for a long time, and seeing him was a truly amazing thing. My regular crewmates happen to be my in real life best friends, so getting to have this multiplayer, shared world narrative experience that we were able to partake in together was just something we'll never forget. Thank you so much for Sea of Thieves and thank you for Tall Tales. Question: Do you think we'll be seeing a short Tall Tales series for Pirate Legends, maybe based on the crew of Athena's Fortune? It would be a great way for players to be able to earn the ghostly eye curse for, of the mysterious stranger. P.S. As a composer myself, I could hear the influence from Shawshank Redemption end credits themes in The Shores of Gold Be Calmed arrangement. Very charming. Robin Beeland is brilliant. The reply was, So Robin and I sat and listened to the soundtrack to Shawshank Redemption a few times, so it undoubtedly became inspiration. Becalmed had already become a little bit of an anthem and it has always been a special track for the design team. I was keen to embrace this and of course Robin exceeded even my expectations as he normally does. As a lover of music but not a musician, most of our conversations start with Remember Marion's theme from Raiders of the Lost Ark? Or Remember the scene in Gremlins? I want you to feel like that. A last question. Kietsua asks, when will the hitboxes for the traps on Shores of Gold and the Trap Maker be fixed or hotfixed? It seems when they're retracting into the ground completely, they're still killing and pillaging our souls to the ferry. Mike says, unfortunately this is related to the perils of timing base gameplay in a multiplayer world. It will be perfect for some players, but the hitbox will lag behind in some latency scenarios. We've done some work to improve it and we'll no doubt make more improvements as we expand on traps. So then Mike the Mutinous says, I'm going to leave it there. Anyone I've not responded to, it's either because I've missed your post or I've answered a similar question later on. No favouritism when it comes to what we answer, just a game of hungry hippos trying to click and respond fast enough before the pages get too far ahead. If anyone has a pressing question we haven't answered, please DM me on Twitter at Chappers Chapman. Thanks for the questions and feedback. We should do this more. Yes, I agree. It has been amazing and so informative. So as I wrap up, I obviously want to say a huge thank you and congratulations to the whole team for making all of this possible. Your passion for your work makes our experience a thousand times better. We appreciate all that you do for this community and know that you will continue to do so in the future. I've never done anything like this before, so please let me know what you think. I just hope I've helped someone. Thanks for watching.